I'm gonna be surviving the next 100 days in hardcore Minecraft is a brand new titan from outer space, the Juggernaut Titan. Using my energy shield to deflect attacks and laser arm to slice through obstacles, I will take down numerous threats while growing into bigger and badder forms. Will I be able to defeat the new skibbity threat, or will it be sent back from where I came? It was time to find out, as I crash landed onto Earth. It was day one, and I broke out of the remains of my spaceship with low health. I was badly damaged from the crash, and my memory was a blur. Ow, my head. I can't remember anything. Suddenly, a scorpion skibbity toilet appeared among the wreckage. What's this? A juggernaut titan? Your alien parts are just what I need to defeat the Alliance and those pests astro toilets. The massive beast closed in on me with his claws, trying to break me to pieces. I fought back the best I could, but due to the damage I took from the wreck, I was powerless against him. The scorpion skibbity dug his claws into my body, hitting me with a poisonous shockwave. I took massive damage and realized a strange tracking device had appeared in my inventory. Get away from me! I escaped his grip and used my powerful juggernaut punch to knock over a nearby silo. When I did, it crumbled in his path and gave me a chance to make a run for it. You fool! You will never escape me now! Get him, men! A swarm of miniature scorpion skibbities came racing behind me. On day two, I was being chased through a crop field by a horde of scorpion skibbity minions. I ran as fast as I could and tried hiding in a nearby windmill. I thought I was safe, but the scorpion toilets were somehow able to find my hiding spot. You fool! As long as you have the tracking device on, you'll never escape! The scorpions closed in, and I frantically tried to throw the device out of my inventory. But no matter how hard I tried, it wouldn't budge. I can't get rid of this thing. I have to run. I barely escaped the windmill and continued running through the farmland as the toilets chased behind. To my terror, I ran into larger scorpion skibbities and found myself surrounded. Your parts are ours now. Suddenly, the TV woman arrived into the area and used her red screen attack. The scorpions were set ablaze and quickly burnt to a crisp. Are you okay? Before we had a moment to catch our breath, a serpent skibbity slithered out of nowhere and hit the TV woman with its venom. Nobody rebels against the scorpion skibbity toilet. Ugh, they poisoned me. I can't fight like this. Then we have to move. Now. On day three, the TV woman and I escaped the farm and found ourselves inside of the city's junkyard. We dug down into a silo as the serpent skibbity flew into the junkyard in search of us. However, I realized we had a big problem on our hands. Hands. I have a tracking device stuck on me. If I stay with you, that serpent skibbity is gonna find us. Hold still. The TV woman used the rest of her strength and lit her screen red, causing the device to break off of me. I don't have much time. Find something here to heal me before it's too late. I ran out of the hiding spot and looked around to soon spot a potion sitting at the top of a junk pile. However, the serpent skibbity was lurking nearby. Luckily, I had an idea. I grabbed the nearby rock and tossed it in the opposite direction. You fools can't hide from me. The serpent slithered after it, leaving the potion in the open. I ran as fast as I could towards the cure. Before I got close, I thought I spotted something else flying through the sky. Rewind the video and watch at 0.25 speed to see if you spot it. There are plenty more awesome secrets where that came from, so try to find them all hidden throughout the video. At last, I reached the potion, but before I was able to grab it, the serpent skibbity popped out in front of me. You thought you could fool me. You made a grave mistake. The snake used his acid breath to melt the bottle, destroying it. He then lunged at me with his poisonous fangs. On days four through seven, I was forced into a corner by the serpent skibbity. The potion had been destroyed, and without my arm, I was defenseless. Suddenly, I spotted an object radiating in the nearby rubble. Something about that object, it's calling to me. It must be one of my lost parts. I ran past the serpent and grabbed the part, causing my body to transform. My broken pieces were restored to their original state, and I regained my laser cannon arm. I now had five more hearts and new abilities. Uh, this isn't good. Men, get in here. Out of nowhere, a horde of serpent skibbity minions came in to kill me. But this time, I was able to fight back. I blasted the laser from my arm cannon, leveling minion after minion with my juggernaut power. If this is the strength of one part, I wonder what finding them all will do. The serpent skibbity continued attacking with his poison breath, but I used my laser cannon to keep him at bay. 
Unfortunately, even with my upgraded body, I wasn't strong enough to stop the oversized snake. I then used a mega punch to stagger him and rush to the TV woman's side. When I got there, she was getting weaker by the second and couldn't help me fight. We have to get out of here. We both ran from the junkyard together as the serpent skibbity leader shouted at me in the distance. Kill all of the men you want, but without the potion that I have. You will never be able to cure the TV woman. <laughs> On days 8 through 10, the TV woman took me back to her base where TV men were taking cover inside. Before I could ask her what was going on, a cloud of smoke appeared before me and the Titan TV man revealed himself. Who dares to enter this base? Please, I don't want to hurt you. I'm a Titan just like you. Is that so? Well, Titan or not, you must prove that you're worthy of being an ally to the Alliance. Find a way to cure the TV woman and we will help repair you. But the only antidote is with the Serpent Skibbity. Just then, a little TV man ran up to me. Hi, I'm Blitz. I, I know where we can find that guy. Who are you? I'm your guide. Finding a cure like that can be quite difficult. Come with me and I'll help you find it. You can trust Blitz. He's one of our brightest minds. Good luck. We're all counting on you. I won't fail you. I then followed Blitz's lead and he led me to another base swarming with serpent toilets. We only have one shot at this. How are we going to get past those guards? With my awesome powers. Let's go. I ran in towards the threats to take them down. On days 11 through 14, I struck down serpent minions after serpent minion as Blitz hid in fear. I used my newly reclaimed laser cannon to cut through the hordes of serpents and threw heavy punches at any that came too close. Thanks to my recent upgrade, I was more than able to take them on. What are you doing? This is dangerous. The TV woman needs us now. I'll get that cure fast with brute force. I used my abilities to strike down the remaining serpents and then push my way into the base. When I did, I found myself in a lab. There, I spotted the antidote sitting under a massive energy core as well as a beast contained in a cage. That guy looks dangerous. I better grab that potion before something bad happens. Just then, the serpent skibbity leader came in to stop me. Look what the cat has trapped in. I'm going to enjoy watching you get ripped apart piece by piece. The serpent leader pulled a lever, releasing the skibbity monster from its test tube. The beast stepped out and turned its sights onto me. I tried to fight the monster, but his scaly armor protected him from my energy blasts. I blasted his toes with my laser beam, making him scream in agony. I can't keep this up much longer. Just as I thought I was done for, Blitz jumped in and used a ray gun attack to stun the oversized lizard. Sugar not Titan, finish off the monster, now! I did as I was told, and struck the beast with my laser, finishing him off for good. No, my sweet pet, you'll pay for this. The serpent skibbity charged in, but Blitz quickly stopped him in his tracks as well. You know what to do. Got it. I beat down the serpent as well, defeating both of the threats. Dang, that weapon is strong. Can I get one of those? There's no time. Get that potion. On days 15 through 17, the antidote was open for the taking. I ran towards the vial, but I didn't realize I was headed straight for a pressure plate. No, wait. Blitz pushed me out of the way, getting himself captured instead as he fell down into a trap. I wanted to break him free, but before I could, the scorpion skibbity leader smashed through the entrance and stepped in front of us. My, my. Now that I've seen what that alien tech of yours is capable of. I absolutely need it for myself. He used an acid spit attack on me, which I managed to evade and counter with my laser cannon. How do you like that? To my horror, the scorpion endured the attack like it was nothing. He was far stronger than I could have ever imagined. Get the antidote and run! The TV woman won't last much longer. But what about you? I I'll be fine. Just hurry. As the scorpion prepared his next attack, I reluctantly snatched the antidote and ran away while I still had the chance. On days 18 through 21, I returned to the TV man base and gave the TV woman the cure just in time. She drank it quickly and fortunately, it got rid of the poison. Oh, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. Thank you, Juggernaut. Welcome back, rookie. What happened to Blitz? I explained to him our encounter with the Scorpion Skibbity leader and how his new mission was to hunt me down for 
scrap. This is worse than I thought. What do you mean? The Scorpion Skibbity Toilet is the highest ranking officer in the Skibbity Toilet Army. If he gets his hands on all of your lost parts, it will mean certain doom for the Alliance. You need to gather all the remaining five parts before he can and defeat him. After everything you guys have done for me, I'd be happy to serve you. But before I can find more parts, I have to save Blitz. I think I can help with that. The TV woman walked towards me and handed me a map with Blitz's coordinates. Blitz has a tracking device on him. This will take you to wherever that nasty scorpion hit him. Then there's no time to waste. I'll find him. I quickly began my journey towards Blitz's whereabouts. I had to save him before the Skibbities did something unthinkable. On days 22 through 25, I followed the map TV woman gave me and found Blitz. He was trapped inside of a cage with an electric Skibbity standing before him. This is your last chance, Alliance scum. Tell me everything you know. I'd rather die than help you. Fine. If that's the case, then you're of no use to me. He used his abilities to shock the cage, electrocuting Blitz and weakening him severely. Oh no, I have to help him. I intervened, landing behind the toilet and landing a surprise attack on him, knocking him away from the cage. Blitz had been saved, but now the electric skibbity's focus was on me. Well, look who decided to join us. Juggernaut Titan, run! Before I could react, the floor opened under my feet and I plummeted into the depths below. The electric skibbity had set off a trap. Ah! Rewind at 0.25 speed and see if you spot something interesting. Ah! Eventually, I landed inside of an incinerator. It activated and I saw lava beginning to rise towards me as the heat rose quickly. I have to get out of here before I'm burnt to death. On days 26 through 28, I was using pieces of the incinerator's walls to platform upwards, avoiding the rising lava as the heat continued to rise. As I climbed, I took damage gradually from the intense heat of the surrounding air. Just a little further. Eventually, I made it to the top of the incinerator and ran towards the exit as the lava closed in from below. I managed to narrowly escape the incinerator, closing the door behind me, protecting me from the lava. I looked around and realized that I had run into a skibbity laboratory. What is this place? Suddenly, a barrage of lasers fired at me, but I managed to dodge them. I looked and soon found myself face to face with a scientist skibbity. Get back in the incinerator. He attacked me again with his laser barrage, and I tried to evade once more, but his attack was quick and it struck me, leaving me with low health. I ran in and threw my own arm laser back at him. I managed to stun him temporarily, but knew I couldn't afford to keep fighting him. I was forced to run for the exit while I still could. On days 29 through 32, I escaped the facility and emerged at an excavation site with a giant drill digging through a meteor crater. I observed from a distance and saw that skibbity toilets were scouring the area for alien technology that may be buried in the crater. As I neared the excavation site, I felt a similar sensation that I felt back at the junkyard. This time, it was coming from the meteor. The next part has to be inside of that thing. I can feel it. There were too many skibbities in my way and I needed to get them away from the crash site. I looked around the area and spotted a massive skibbity satellite dish. I got an idea and ran up to it, firing my laser at it. It overheated and combusted into flames, creating a distraction. Hey, the satellite's on fire. I bet that was aliens. Let's go check it out. The toilets that stood in my way went off to investigate, giving me the opportunity I needed to unleash my powers onto the meteor. I unleashed my lasers into it and it burst open, revealing my next lost part inside. Don't mind if I do. I was about to claim it when the electric skibbity from before slammed down into me from above, knocking me away from the part. Did you really think it would be that easy? I'll be taking this. He grabbed the part and upon making contact with it, he transformed into an even stronger form. This power! You're going down, Juggernaut Titan! All the hearts will be mine! He lunged towards me and attacked. On days 33 to 35, I was fighting the empowered electric skibbity. He used his lighting attacks with immense strength behind every blow that he landed on me. I tried to fight back with my melee strikes and laser, but without the power of the second part, I didn't stand a chance against him. I tried to force him back, but he landed another crushing blow upon me, causing me to stagger and launching me back into the crater. You can't defeat me in this state. You're done for. He lunged towards me and I managed to dodge, causing him to end up beneath the excavation site's drill. This gave me an idea. Taste metal, freak. I hit a nearby switch, activating the drill and causing it to drill through the electric skibbity's head. It was enough to kill him and he dropped the parts. But before I could make my way over to it, the scientist skibbity from the lab suddenly caught up to me. You're a persistent little runaway, but you cannot outrun my intellect. He 
fired another laser at me and I dodged towards the part, touching it and causing me to transform. I gained five hearts, new powers, and a protective shield. I put this new shield to work as the scientist Skibbity fired another laser at me. I blocked it, deflecting the laser back to the scientist Skibbity and killing him. Ha, huh, your intellect didn't see that coming, did it? I then fled from the area using my new flight abilities before the Skibbity toilets could catch up to me. On days 36 to 39, I returned to my TV base where I found that the Titan and Blitz were waiting for me. He had managed to escape. Hey, hey, good to see you made it back too. Love the new look, by the way. Thanks. If you think this looks good, just wait until I get the rest of my parts back. Well, you came just in time. We got a distress call from the speaker man, and I think you're the Titan for the job. I'm on it. Where are they? The Titan TV man gave me a note with the coordinates of the speaker man on it, and I flew away to go help him. The coordinates soon led me to the speaker man base where I saw that a skibbity toilet airship was floating above and firing lasers down onto it. Everything was being destroyed. Destroyed. I ran in to assist the speaker men and quickly met up with their titan. You must be the juggernaut titan we've heard about. We need your help defending this base. I've got your back. I positioned myself in the middle of the base and used my new powers to create a protective dome around it. This helped defend the base from the airship's aerial attacks. This won't hold forever. If we want to stop their assault, then we need to take out the source. Then we need to get up there and destroy that airship. I'm right behind you. Let's move. We both took to the skies, flying through the dome and approaching the skibbity airship. Airship. On days 40 through 43, the Titan Speaker Man and I landed on the Skibbity airship and found ourselves face to face with a flying explosive Skibbity. You came straight into the lion's den. You fools! They'll blast through your pathetic shields and then you! We engaged the toilet in combat and he used his explosive attacks on the Titan Speaker Man and I. Our goal was to destroy the airship, but it was hard to get to with the explosive Skibbity in our way. The Titan Speaker Man shredded his guitar, sending powerful sound waves at the toilet, stunning him temporarily. There should be an internal power source inside. I'll fry it circuits. You keep this one busy. The Titan Speaker Man flew inside the ship and located the power source. He quickly flew to it and began chipping away at it with his sonic boom attacks, while I kept the Skibbity at bay. The explosive Skibbity unleashed a barrage of explosive projectiles at me, but I used my shield to repeatedly block them. However, each explosion weakened my shield little by little, and I was gradually losing ground. That's it! Give up! Never! I surprised him and countered him with a laser attack of my own, stunning the toilet yet again. Now's my chance! Speaker Man, exit the ship! Right! I then jumped up and landed on the explosive toilet's ignition handle, ready to ignite his explosives. Sayonara, freak! No! The Titan Speaker Man and I fled from the ship as the toilet detonated in a massive explosion. Thanks to the damage the Titan had inflicted upon its power source, the explosion caused a chain reaction which took the entire ship down. That's what you get for messing with the Alliance! The Titan Speaker Man and I landed amongst the ship's rubble and I spotted a map. I picked it up and saw that it led to the next part. Seems like you have a Clear direction on where to head next. Go on. I can handle things from here. Thanks. Keep your people safe. Thanks to you, they'll be just fine. Oh, and before you go, I think this might be of some use to you. He handed me a mysterious device to help me on my journey. Once I picked it up, I followed the map to the next location. On days 44 to 46, I was led to a giant pyramid that led into a maze within. As interesting as it looked, I didn't want to risk going through it. This looks like a challenge. Let's think smarter, not harder. I used my ability to fly to try and fly over, but I found that there was a ceiling preventing me from cheating the temple's maze. Ow! I guess I have to get through this the old-fashioned way. I wandered through the maze, trying my best to navigate through it. I tried to keep my bearings, but with every corner I turned, I became more and more disoriented. I realized I was completely lost and began to try and analyze my surroundings when I accidentally bumped into the TV woman. Ah! Ah! Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Suddenly, some kind of skibbity monster clawed through the hallway next to us. What's going on? I've been stuck in this maze for days with that thing hunting me. There's no way out of here. That can't be true. How is that toilet able to move around so easily? He can teleport. It's like he controls the maze. Teleportation, huh? I have an idea. I walked out from our cover. Hey, toilet, come and get me. What are you doing? A portal ripped open behind me and the toilet emerged from it. He closed in to kill me, but I reacted quickly. I dodged aside and landed a laser attack on it, killing him and leaving the portal open. Let's get out of here. We jumped through the portal together before it closed behind us. On days 47 through 50, the TV woman and I arrived on the other end of the portal to find ourselves standing in front of the third lost part. Unfortunately for us, it was being guarded by a hacker skibbity. What the? How 
did you manage to get past the maze monster? We're more clever than you think. Now hand over that part. The hacker Skibbity flew down and used his hack attacks to try and take us down. I took to the air and met him head on, using my upgraded attacks in Skibbity while the TV woman fired scorching hot beams at him from her screen, backing me up from below. We continued to trade blows, but despite our best efforts, he was too tough, and I couldn't break through his defenses and reach the part. <sighs> you are getting your hands on that part. You'll die for what you did to the maze monster. He landed a direct hit on me using a powerful laser, leaving me on the ropes. The juggernaut isn't going to make it. I need to act fast. The TV woman then detached her head and flew past the hacker Skibbity. She flew over and picked up the part with her head. Catch! She flew it over to me and dropped the part down below my feet. I touched down and grabbed it, upgrading my body and gaining five parts and new powers. Armed with my new abilities, I charged up my new chest beam and lasered down the hacker Skibbity, defeating him for good. Yes, we did it! Suddenly, a beam struck me from the sky above. I began to get sucked into the air. Juggernaut, no! The TV woman couldn't save me and I was abducted by a spaceship. On days 51 to 54, I was pulled onto a spaceship. When my vision cleared, I found myself face to face with a group of toilets I'd never seen before. Their leader was standing before me. Welcome back to us, Juggernaut Titan. Welcome back? I don't even know who you are. You don't remember your own kind? We are the Astro Toilets, superior beings here to conquer Earth. What are you talking about? I'm not like you toilets. I'm a titan. A titan that I built with my own three claws. That crash must have messed with your memory banks, but that should be an easy fix. The astral leader used his powers on me and I was flooded with memories that I had lost. I saw flashes of the past showing my creation and how I grew up alongside the astral leader. What he was saying was true. I remember now, you're like family to me. This is great. We can team up with the Alliance to defeat the Skibbity Twins together. What are you saying? The Astro Toilets are going to overthrow the Skibbities and the Alliance. But I can't do that. The Alliance has done so much for me. You are not one of them, Juggernaut. You are one of us. Take your rightful place at my side and we will conquer all together. No. Bray your creator. I'll never abandon the Alliance. Fine. If you won't obey, then I'll just have to reprogram you. Before I could react, he pulled a lever and the ground opened under my feet, causing me to fall down into a chute. On days 55 through 57, I landed inside of a cage that sealed over my head before I had a chance to escape. I looked and saw that there was an astro toilet standing in front of the cage. Welcome home, Juggernaut. I can't wait to remove all your memories of the Alliance. It's so cruel how they've poisoned your mind. My memories of them are not poison. The Alliance are my friends. You can't make me forget them. I tried to break through the cage, but the force field was impenetrable. <laughs> we built you. Of course we know how to keep you contained. After all, you still don't know where the rest of your parts are. Where are you keeping them? You'll know in due time. But first, I must wipe your memories. He began tinkering with the machine and the cage began to zap me, making my head spin. If I didn't stop him in time, my memories of the Alliance would be gone. Ah, spider! Ha! You won't fool me with... The Astro Minion looked and saw the spider on the console. Oh, good heavens! He panicked and tried to smash it, smashing the console instead. The machine then shut off and the cage opened. I was free! <laughs> Thanks, sucker! Get it away! Get it away! The Astro Toilet ran from the spider as I left the room. On days 58 through 61, I ran through the ship before the Astro Toilet guards could find me. As I was running, I swear I caught a glimpse of something unusual. If only I could rewind and watch that back at 0.25 speed, but I got to book it. After a bit of running through the ship, I made it to the control room. I'm hijacking this thing. I used the control panel to access the Astro Toilet's files. I managed to find information on the next hidden part. I began preparing a nearby teleportation pad, setting it to take me to the location of the next part. But before I could have it teleport me away, the Astro Leader appeared before me. You wretched, disobedient creature. You would turn your back on your own people? He attacked me with his gravity attacks, pulling me closer and away from the teleportation pad. I countered the pull of the gravity with a shield attack and fought back using all of my strength. But he was far stronger than me. I made you, Juggernaut Titan. You would betray your own creator? I can't stand by and let you destroy the Alliance. They're good people who saved me after the crash. Good people? <laughs> They're inferior beings. They only exist to be conquered by those stronger than them. No, they deserve to choose their own path. 
I fight for what's right, and what's right is not trying to control others. Then you're weak, just like they are. He attacked me once again, but I flew around him, landing on the teleporter just in time and being sent away. Run all you want, Juggernaut. I'll hunt you down and dismantle you myself. You're officially an enemy of the Astro Toilets. On days 62 through 64, I reappeared on the surface at the coordinates of the next part. However, there was a series of walls blocking me from getting to it. The Astro Toilets are probably still looking for me in the sky, so I should try to avoid flying for now. Instead of flying over the walls, I approached the wall. The first one was made of ice, and so I was able to blast through it with the heat of my laser cannon. The next was made of a tougher material, but looked less stable, and so I was able to ram through it with my shield. I reached the final wall, but to my dismay, it was made of bedrock. How am I supposed to break through this? Just then, I noticed some kind of old, abandoned alien weapon nearby. Looks like this thing was made by the Astro Toilets, but if I was too, then I should be able to use this. I used my powers on the weapon, and in a stroke of luck, it caused the weapon to reactivate. I then aimed it at the wall and fired it, destroying the wall completely. I stepped forward and found the fourth part. I grabbed it and was granted five hearts and new powers. I was ready to return to my allies, but I had come to a terrible realization. What if the Alliance rejects me for being a creation of the Astro Toilets? Just just then, the TV woman ran towards me. Targona, there you are! I'm glad to see you're okay. Come on, we need you back at the base. The Titan has something important to share with us. I followed the TV woman back to the TV base, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something bad would happen if the Alliance found out where I came from. On days 65 to 67, I returned to the TV base with the TV woman and found the Titan TV man had gathered all the other TV men together. Thank you for meeting here. I wish it was under better circumstances, but unfortunately, I must inform you all that we have a new threat to deal with. The Astro Toilets have arrived. Oh no. They come from a world far from our own and see themselves as superior beings. They believe it's their right to rule over our planet, and they destroy the Alliance and the Skibbities to make that happen. They're the most advanced foes we've faced so far, so they will be willing to use any tactics to take us down. Watch your backs. They could be anywhere. <sighs> Well, with the Juggernaut Titan back on our side, I'd say we have a trump card to use against them. I agree. You are our secret weapon, Juggernaut. We know you won't let us down. As my allies cheered, I felt a horrible guilt overcome me. I couldn't hide the truth from them any longer, and so I stepped forward. Everyone stop! I have a confession to make. The room went quiet as my friends looked upon me. I... I just found out that I was made by the Astro Toilets. You are what? I had no memory of this until recently. I swear, I was never on their side. You're a mole. You've infiltrated our ranks to try and kill us when we're at our most vulnerable. Well, I won't let you. The Titan TV man charged towards me, but the TV woman stopped him in his tracks. Out of my way, TV woman. I need to stop him. No, we need to hear him out. Go ahead, Juggernaut. It's true. I was created by the Astro Toilets to help them with their conquest. But where I came from doesn't matter. You're my friends, and that hasn't changed. I would never betray the Alliance for any reason. The Titan TV man and the TV woman exchanged a look, and he seemed to calm down. You saved us many times. I'll put my faith in you for now, but don't make me regret this decision. Suddenly, I heard the sound of static in my ear. Calling all Alliance members. Can anyone hear us? We're under attack. It was a distress call. Oh no, the cameramen need my help. I followed where the distress call signal was coming from and set off to help. On days 68 through 72, I arrived at the source of the distress call to find the cameramen being held captive on a farm. The entire area was infested with plant toilets. I kept my head down, quietly stealthing my way over to the barn holding the cameraman. What's going on here? The Astro Toilets placed that gem over there, mutating all of the plants into these terrible toilet monsters. They trapped us and took our next upgrade. Those thieves! Let me get you out of here first, and then we'll see what to do next. I sneaked around the area, trying to keep myself from being spotted by the plants as I made my way towards the gem. Unfortunately, I accidentally stepped on one of their roots, alerting the plant monsters and turning their attention towards me. Uh-oh. I ran as fast as I could, not daring to look back as the creature 
creatures pursued me. I spotted the gem at the top of the hill nearby and sped towards it. Once I reached it, I quickly used my powers to destroy it. All of the plants died upon the destruction of the gem and the cameramen were safe to leave the barn. Thanks for saving us. Now we can help you get that part back from the Astros. How are we gonna do that? We just need to set a trap that no alien toilet could resist. On days 73 through 75, I headed with the cameraman into a clearing and came upon a group of cows. There was also a pen close by. Those Astro toilets have a thing for abducting cows. I think we can use them as the perfect bait. Suddenly, the cameraman put on a cowboy hat. It's time to herd some cattle. Yeehaw! He ran over to a nearby horse and hopped on, and then began herding the group of cows. Get up now! Get on in there! Soon, he managed to gather them inside of it. And now we just wait. We waited in hiding until nightfall, and like the cameraman had predicted, the Astro Toilet ship appeared in the sky. A beam shot down from the ship, and they began abducting the cows from the pen. Now's your chance. Go get them, partner. I jumped out of hiding and moved into the beam, causing me to get sucked up into the ship. There was a bright white flash, and I appeared inside of the ship in a room full of cows. I had successfully infiltrated the Astro Toilet ship. I better find the next part and get out of here before I'm discovered. On days 76 through 79, I explored the ship in search of the next part. I eventually entered a new area with laser traps scattered around and the next part I needed at the end of it. If I touch those, the Astros will know I'm here. Better be careful. I carefully maneuvered between the beams, making sure not to make contact with any of them. I was able to make progress towards the part until I reached an impassable wall of beams. Luckily, I had an idea. Shield, don't fail me now! I charged the beams with my shield up, keeping myself safe from the alarms. I can't believe that worked! I was now able to make a beeline for the fifth part. However, as I approached it, a beam suddenly lit up at my feet, colliding with me and causing me to set off the alarm. What the heck? That's not fair! Just then, an Astro Minion broke into the room to stop me. Stop right there, treacherous scum! Before he could get to me, I quickly grabbed the part and upgraded. I gained five hearts and new powers. Hand over the part, you thief! He used his fire shot attacks on me, but thanks to my upgraded form, they were completely harmless. With a single laser attack, I took him down. Finally, time to get out of here. Suddenly, I was blindsided by a surprise attack. Before I knew what was happening, my vision faded to black and I passed out. On days 80 to 83, I woke up inside of a room within the Astro Toilet spaceship. Standing behind a glass window was the leader of the Astro Toilets. Ah, you're awake. I must admit, I didn't think that one strike would be enough to knock you out. You truly are weak. Let me go! Why would I ever let a traitor go? I'll give you one more chance, Juggernaut. Embrace what you were made for and join us. Never! You guys are monsters! I'm gonna find that last part and destroy you along with the Skibbity Toilets. The last part? Do you mean this one? The Astro Leader showed me the part. I bashed on the glass, but he just put it back in his inventory. Nah, uh uh After everything you've done, clearly you don't wish to reach your full potential. So we might as well end your journey here. He powered on a machine, filling the room with poison gas. I once thought of you as my greatest creation. I thought wrong. So long, Juggernaut Titan. He exited the room, leaving me to die. I had to find a way out before it was too late. On days 84 through 86, my health was dropping rapidly from the poison gas. I spotted a door which led to an emergency exit room that I could use to escape the ship. I ran over to it, but the door was sealed shut. No, let me through! I smashed into the door with my shield bash over and over again, gradually wearing it down. The poison had weakened me, but I called upon what little strength I had left and eventually managed to knock the door down. I spotted an escape pod and hopped inside to take control of it. Using the pod to escape the ship, I flew down towards the surface and landed, managing to make it back in one piece. This is bad. I need to get the final part from the Astro Toilet's leader before they attack again. But I can't as long as they have their ship. I began walking away from my escape pod until I spotted a magnet skibbity flying by in the sky. I took cover and luckily he didn't notice me, so I began to follow him from a distance. I tailed him for a bit until we arrived at a base full of magnetic technology. With that kind of power, I can bring down the Astro Toilet ship in one go. I invaded the magnet base, staying undetected as I looted whatever technology I could. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't careful enough and was spotted by the massive magnet Skibbity. Shut up! Get him! I ran away from the base as fast as I could while the massive toilet chased after me. As I fled, I looked up to see the astro ship in front of me. I flew up onto a nearby skyscraper to get closer to it. I had no idea how close that monstrous magnet toilet was, so I had to act fast. I set up the technology I had looted as fast as I could, quickly constructing a magnetic pillar. I have one shot at this. Here goes nothing. I powered on the cannon and hoped for the best. On days 87 through 89, the cannon the magnetic powers activated and caused the astro toilet ship to stall in place and start pulling the ship apart. It's working! The ship is caught in the magnetic field! We're under attack! Abandon ship! The astros all flew out of the ship as it continued to explode. Well, I better call for backup. I approached the rubble of the ship on the ground and spotted the astro leader emerging from it. I see you survived the crash, my creator. You escaped! That's it. These claws brought you into this world and now I'll use them to rip you apart. The astro leader angrily came after me, unleashing aggressive fire attacks. I stood my ground, using my juggernaut attacks to fight back against him. We went back and forth, but every hit he landed told me that I couldn't win without the sixth part. I did what I could with my shield to block some of his blows, but he landed a power fire attack, breaking my shields and launching me back. Ha! You're weak without all of your parts. Prepare to die. Looking around for options to defeat him, I spotted the ship's energy core in the rubble next to him. Take this! Using my laser, I shot at him, blowing it up and destroying the astro leader for good. This caused him to drop the part and I was able to run over and grab it. I gained five hearts and new powers. I had finally restored my complete titan strength. However, just nearby, a scorpion skibbity minion spotted me. There's the juggernaut titan! Get him, boys! A swarm of scorpion skibbities flooded the area and came towards me. On days 90 to 92, I was fighting off the scorpion minions. Thanks to my new powers, I had the strength to deal with the smaller minions, but their numbers were still Still overwhelming. Men, steal all the astro tech you can! The toilet scattered and began gathering tech from the ship's crash site. I was about to go in to stop them, but the Scorpion Skibbity leader soon emerged. Thanks for bringing down the astro toilets. Now we can use their technology for ourselves. The Scorpion Skibbity used his acid laser attacks on me, stunning me momentarily and giving him a chance to pick up a piece of astro toilet gear. Doing so caused him to grow even larger. <laughs> Taste my power! I tried to fly up to attack him, but he used a devastating laser beam to blast me out of the sky, sending me crashing back down. It's no use. I have to heal up if I'm gonna stand a chance. I clung onto life and ran away. As I escaped, the scorpion skibbity watched me with a keen eye. Go on, run while you still can. You couldn't beat us before, and now we're stronger than ever. On days 93 to 95, I rushed back and reunited with the TV men at their base. Juggernaut? What happened? You look terrible. I told the TV woman that I had obtained all six parts to defeat the Astro Toilets, but now the Skibbities had their hand on Astro Toilet tech. And we can't wait any longer. If that technology makes them as strong as you say, then we need to stage an assault on them before they have a chance to use it. I began passing out armor to the TV men, getting them into fighting shape for the final battle. After a bit of time, the TV men were fully equipped and ready for battle. We're ready to attack, but one issue still remains unsolved. If we don't have a cure to the scorpion's venom, then we have no hope of winning this battle. Then I'll just have to get some of the antidote before we leave. Where can I find it? Bring me these items and I'll brew enough of the cure to protect our army tenfold. I need kelp, honey, and prismatic dust. Leave it to me! I took to the skies and went on my way. On days 96 to 98, I went down through the list and began gathering the ingredients for the poison antidote. I swam underwater in search of the first ingredient, kelp. Fortunately, I found it very quickly. That was easy. I then ventured into a plains biome in search of the next ingredient, honey. I found a beehive in a tree surrounded by angry bees. Using my juggernaut attacks, I took the bees out and took the honey from the hive. I kind of feel bad for them, but I needed that honey. I could have sworn 
I saw something else too. I continued on searching for the last ingredient, the prismatic dust. This one was proving much more difficult to find than the last two. Eventually, I turned a corner and saw a cameraman trading items at a booth. He was peddling a wide array of items, including the prismatic dust that I needed. Hey, how much is that dust? I don't take money here. I only do trades. Oh, if that's the case, then how does 10 diamonds sound? Only 10? You could do better than that, Sonny. Uh, okay. What about this strange device I got from the Titan Speaker Man? From the Titan Speaker Man? I'm his biggest fan. I've been to all of his concerts. Then it's all yours if you give me that dust. It's a deal. I then dropped the strange device and claimed the prismatic dust in exchange. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Wait till the boys hear about this. I then returned to the TV woman and gave her the items she had requested. She used a brewing stand and made enough antidotes to protect all of the Alliance soldiers from the Scorpion Skibbity's poison. She then splashed them on everyone. Once everyone had the antidote, I knew we were ready. All right, men, it's time to invade the Skibbity Scorpion Nest. On day 99, I arrived back in my crashed ship with my men to find it had been turned into a Skibbity Scorpion Nest. It was crawling with terrifying toilets that were ready to meet us in battle. Everyone, this is it. Charge! We all quickly began to invade the nest, determined to end this war once and for all. I used all my juggernaut attacks to back up all my allies as they fought off the poisonous enemies. The TV men used their swords to cut through the overwhelming waves of enemies, while the TV woman fought by my side using her red screen fire powers to ignite the scorpions and setting them ablaze. As I took on as many as possible, I got stung left and right, but thanks to the antidote the TV woman cooked up, I survived the attacks. Hang in there, men. We're almost there. With my allies helping to cut through their forces, I made it to the entrance of the nest, but a swarm of scorpion skibbities emerged to stop me. We'll never let you reach our leader. There's just too many of them. That's when the TV woman arrived and burned the next wave of enemies. Go ahead, Juggernaut Titan. We got this. Thank you. I ran into the heart of the nest within my ship to finish the job. On day 100, I dropped into my ship and arrived at the heart of the nest to find the scorpion skibbity leader waiting inside. Surrender to the Alliance or face my wrath. So you were able to breach my defenses. A meaningless victory. With the power of the Astrotech, I will crush you. The Scorpion Skibbity didn't waste another moment and came after me with a laser attack. I fought back with a fireball attack of my own, but with his new tech, he was much stronger than any other time I had faced him. I lunged at him for a shield bash attack and a few laser blasts, but he endured the blows and struck me hard enough to launch me back. You will feel my sting. I ran in for another attack, but he quickly pierced his stingers into me, poisoning me. But thanks to my antidote from the TV woman, I was quickly cured. What is this? My poison isn't affecting you. No matter. You won't be getting out of here alive. I continued to fight him off, attempting to bring him down for good. We traded blows back and forth as I put up the best fight that I could. We were neck and neck, and the fate of the Alliance was in my hands. For the Alliance! I dug deep and unleashed a power shockwave that gave me the strength to land a powerful strike onto the Scorpion Skibbity, killing him once and for all. The war had been won in the name of the Alliance. But wait, did you spot all the UFO Easter eggs hidden throughout the video? Rewatch and see if you can spot them all. See ya!